So the 30 Bergs of the Seamorg, they had no idea what lay ahead of them on their journey or how things would turn out. But propelled by imaginings of what could be possible, they moved through strange and alarming terrain, and they discovered what they never could have conceived of before their journey, that they had everything they needed in each other. Last night, our Jewish siblings celebrated the first night of Passover by telling the story of their ancestors whose imaginations also set them out on a formidable journey into the unknown, how they packed their things up and departed the life they knew, following their dream of freedom, of liberation from slavery in Egypt, and how they miraculously crossed parted waters of the Red Sea with Moses as their guide. In Hebrew, the word for Egypt is Mitzrayim, and it comes from a word meaning a narrow place or narrow straits. And the liberation from Mitzrayim symbolizes a liberation from a place of very limited vision and constricted possibilities, a place characterized by smallness, oppression, and limited movement. The ancient Israelites' escape from enslavement began by imagining and trusting that another world was possible for themselves and for their descendants. Holding on to that dream, even when everything around them told them otherwise, even after plagues, extreme weather events, and the killing of innocents. And what exactly would it take to escape this narrow place, this experience of being enslaved, trapped, and controlled? And then once you finally escape, when you're confronted with a huge, deep sea, <clears throat> Well, we get an answer in a famous Midrash, which in the Jewish tradition is a deeper exploration and interpretation of scripture. Sometimes it's a story or a parable that helps bring out the meaning of the text. And this story takes place as the Israelites are fleeing from Pharaoh's army and they come up to the banks of the Red Sea. They're being pursued. <laughs> they have the Egyptian army at their backs. And as they stood at the shore, God urged them on, go forward. How can we move forward, God? Look at the water. Moses starts praying and begging for help. The Egyptian soldiers are closing in. And then one person, Nachshon, follows the instructions and moves forward. And he steps into the water and he takes another step. And as he moves forward, the waters are moving around his ankles and then up to his knees and then up to his waist and then up to his chest and around his neck. And he cries out to God finally as the waters are swirling around his nostrils and he is sure he's going to die. And only then did the waters part to let the people through. What would it mean if we did not limit our imagination to what is possible, to what is doable, to what seems practical, but instead we let our deepest hungers, our truest knowings lead the way? What if we let go of focusing on the how, on the tactics, on the implementation, and let ourselves first be fed and led by the dreams that lay claim to our hearts? What if in the times of greatest constraint, in the narrowest times, when fear is so close, what if that is when we are most in need of the most expansive, unconstrained imagining possible? Because we know that when we lead with how we've always done it, when we follow the well-worn, non-controversial, tried and true path, we end up reproducing the status quo and nothing is going to change. And I don't need to tell you that we need change. And we begin this change by imagining and clutching to our hearts our visions, our visions of a world in which all children grow up safe, loved, and resourced, and everyone has enough to eat and a safe place to live and work they can take pride in, 
a world with no guns and where guns aren't needed, a world where all people have access to excellent health care and mental health resources abound and hold no stigma. And you can walk into a grocery store or an elementary school or a crowded movie theater without your mind and body setting up for worst case scenarios. A world where everyone's right to vote is empowered and protected. A world where our practices nourish the earth and repair the harm we've caused. A world without prisons, without policing. A world where we are all free and people live with dignity and no one is left behind. And we don't dive into these dream spaces simply as some altruistic project of seed flinging into the future. But we dive in as a gesture that humbly and joyfully links arms with both the future and with the past, learning the moves of the dreamers of yesterday and their powerful imaginings that go back all through the human lineage and remembering in our bones that our today is woven from the dream threads that our forebears had the audacity to keep in their grasp. Even in times when their visions were considered deluded, visions like the abolition of slavery, women's suffrage, marriage equality, visions like electricity or a printing press, democracy, weekends, antibiotics, and on and on and on. Dreaming about what is possible, it's our inheritance, it's our lifeline. And in the times of greatest constraint, in the narrowest times, that's the most important time to stoke the embers of our dreams. Historian Jill Lepore recently reflected on stories of plagues in literature, and she's asking, how do plagues end? Well, it turns out that when we tell stories of courtship and marriage, they tend to end in weddings. And when we tell stories of plague and contagion, they tend to end in funerals and in new beginnings. She writes, in the literature of contagion, when society is finally free of disease, it's up to humanity to decide how to begin again. This is the time to imagine right now, to keep moving forward, even in those narrow, narrow spaces, even when we discover that some single charismatic leader isn't gonna save us, but that it's all our shared work to save each other. We will keep stepping into the waters of our most abundant life-giving visions and we'll feel them rise in our ankles, up to our knees, up to our waist, knowing that fear is gonna be hollering at us to turn around and we will keep our imaginations going until the project of human dignity and planetary healing is complete. May it be so.